And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Everywhere we go here in Florida, there are ants. They are all over the place. So, it's interesting. It's, they don't really bother me that much, but you certainly have to watch because if you leave anything out, they'll get into it. So, hooray! We applaud the anteater. The noble beast coming down to take out ants. Is that what this game's about? Supposedly. It happens is really about placing dice and trying to get the most points at the end of the game. It sounds fun and it looks interesting and I suppose that it's okay in its way, but uh, at this point in time I'm really not really in favor of recommending games that are merely okay. Don't get me wrong, I like rolling dice, but in this game it just felt, it just felt almost scripted. Uh, you have to look at it to see. There are several of these cards included in the game, and at the beginning of each round of the game, three of the cards are turned over. These are the termite mounds that players are going to be competing for each turn. Each player is given a handful of dice of their color and a couple worm tokens. These worm tokens can be used during the course of the game for re-rolling dice or to pass if it's your turn. Speaking of which, when it's your turn, you simply roll a die. At that point, you basically usually have a few spots that you can put it into. You can place it in a row, or a, I'm sorry, a column of one of these anthills. So let's take a look at this anthill over here. I've just gone. I decided that this is the anthill I'm going to place the, the die into. I can place it in any of the anthills. I must place it in the leftmost row. And so in the future, if I place any more dice in this row, I must put them in the same column. Anyone else? must put it in a different column, the next leftmost column, and so players will be rolling different things and placing dice in the different columns. When you place a die on a picture of a worm, you get another one of those worms. If you place it on a picture, of, for example, there that shows a glove, then you would take a token that matches that symbol. Those are worth points at the end of the game. Players keep going until they place all their dice, or until there's no longer any dice that they have to place, or any places that they can put them. Which you can see could happen easily because, if, for example, Green put it here, there's only one spot. If he did that in all three mounds, he's only going to get three of his five dice out. Now let's say this is the end of the round, everyone's placed their dice. We now look and see who has the highest total of pips on their dice. Red has five, black has two, Green has six. So Green is the winner, so they will get the token that matches the Queen on this, which is worth six points. Whoever has the second most, which in this case would be red, would get the second number, the five. Anybody who matches this worm number here, which in this instance is a five, gets a worm token. That's pretty much it. Again, worm tokens can be used to pass, or worm tokens can be used to re-roll dice. And we continue till we get to the end of the game. When we get to the end of the game, we are going to add up all the points. Let's assume that this is the, what I have at the end of the game. The queens and the generals that I've collected are worth the points and the tokens. Each worm token I have left over is worth one point each. Of these trash tokens that you've collected, if you've collected two or more, you, you get five points. Otherwise, they're worth nothing. So I would get five and ten, and then for these three, I would get nothing. However, the person who has the most different kinds of this trash gets a bonus ten points. Whoever has the most points is the winner. You can see that I'm not real fond of this, if only because I feel like you have so few choices. Yeah, I mean, look, I, I, I see the parameters of the game. I, I know what you can do. When you're putting dice down, you decide, am I going to try to go for that number to get the worm token? Whoopie-doo. I mean, so many times I played, I saw people re-rolling dice to get the worm token, which they just spent to get the worm token, which doesn't make any sense. It's trying to get those trash, because you get a lot of points for those, or and winning majority. So it's kind of an area control game, having the most in a certain area, but then again, often it just comes down to, honestly, the vagaries of what you've rolled in the dice. I don't know, the artwork is great. Love the artwork of the anteater chasing the ants. I mean, it's funny. Uh, the idea seems sound, but in reality, it doesn't really satisfy as something that's like, boom, 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 light and fun. And people are saying, no, remember, you have to put your, your die all the way over to the left. You feel like you have no control. So this, this isn't one that really does anything for me. 
Thanks for joining us today. For more written, audio, and video reviews, as well as the number one board game podcast, check out the website at www.thedicetower.com. Until then, this is Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.